हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल टुडे वी आर हियर स्टार्टिंग विद आर रेजिडेंसी कोर पॉडकास्ट व्हिच इज फोकस्ड ऑन यू ऑन बीइंग अ रेसिडेंट एंड गाइडिंग यू फर्दर फॉर योर रेजिडेंसी टुडे वी आर वेरी हैप्पी टू हैव विद अस डॉक्टर शिवम पांड्या सर सर इज करेंटली अ सर्जिकल ऑनकोलॉजिस्ट हु इज वर्किंग इन अहमदाबाद एंड आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट हैव ऑल कम अक्रॉस हिज ट्वीट्स ऑन यू नो ट्विटर इन जनरल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू नॉट ओनली सर्जिकल ऑनकोलॉजी बट इन जनरल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू मेडिकल अवेयरनेस uh thank you so much sir for taking out time for this particular podcast and to guide junior doctors to uh, what surgery is as a branch and what are the prospects thank you happy to be here great sir so uh without me wasting much of a time we'll start with you know uh, how is surgery as a branch and you know if you are deciding to go for surgery then what all points you should keep in your mind so uh, sir it is a very popular saying that you know you don't choose surgery surgery chooses you right so basically how should one know that you know surgery is there calling or not whether there will be a particular fit for surgery or not the surgery what or what i have felt is that it's a visual learning so uh, it's a skill which you pick up by seeing and by practicing uh, there are some fields where you pick up things by you know you see you memorize and then you practice yeah. uh, surgery it's a visual skill you see a you see a surgery you practice it with your hands and then you make it better uh, so when you are in mbbs you are attending the those clinical rotations you attend the surgery clinics you attend the ot's and then if you feel that okay my visual memory is strong uh because what happens is that you know you see something in mbbs like i have seen some cases i have seen in mbbs which i have not seen so far after that but if i see it again i will pick it up that okay i had seen that back 20 years ago in my postings so if your visual memory is strong you will be a good surgeon if your hand hand skill is strong then you will be a good surgeon uh, so for me the choice was very obvious because my visuals visual memory is very strong and another thing was that um, i always had this thing that i want to work with my hands so <laughs> surgery is that thing you have to work with your hand and your mind so that's that's what drove me towards this field right so i think the proper hand eye coordination is something which is you know great regard with respect to surgery and i think interns must quite get exposed to the branch in their internship and have a idea of uh, you know whether they should pursue it or not so sir as they say you know surgery is obviously not a terminal branch like you yourself uh, is wor- working in the oncology sector so you know someone who yeah. is not very familiar with such a long learning curve what will be your advice to them uh surgery is not something for a quick reward to be very honest uh, you do if you are an md you pass out and probably within one year of src or ap ship you can be confident of setting up your own opd hmm. uh in case of surgery that thing is not there because you finish 3 years of ms you are probably not very confident at the end of those 3 years unless you have had an excellent residency which is currently i don't think uh, it's quite rare to be honest so then you have to work under someone for a couple of years or you have to do a super specialty or you have to work under someone get a fellowship get trained in laparoscopy and then you can think of you know starting your own practice so the learning curve of surgery is a little bit longer compared to that of the uh, uh, the other i mean the other medical branches and uh, yeah that's what it is i mean it's not a very straight forward thing you have to be do sr ship you have to be do ap ship or sr ship under uh, someone in a unit for a couple of years or work under someone uh, get a fellowship and then you can go ahead so surgery is not a terminal branch even with an ms it's not the end of the road you think you don't want to do a super specialty even with ms you can pick up uh, some sub specialty like uh, there are people who are doing only hernias there are people who are doing only perianal uh, people who are doing only abdominal wall reconstructions someone is doing only breast surgery someone is doing bariatric surgery so huge huge scope wide gamut of cases are there 
right right so sir as you uh, said you know that uh, 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 feeling confident after ms is something which is very much dependent on your residency how is the workload and all so if someone who is you know looking for options first is ms versus dnb and even in ms or even in dnb what are the uh, prospects via which one should decide ki kaun sa college karna chahiye with respect to location cutting and whatever you feel are the perfect measures to you know uh, have an idea uh -huh. see ms versus dnb is a tricky debate because what what happens is that uh, when you are in ms uh, when you are thinking of you know which what should i take ms or dnb the choices sometimes are the choices never between a top tier ms college and a top tier dnb college sometimes it's very rare hmm. most often the choices are that you are not getting a very good college for ms and then you are getting a decent college for dnb what to do in that case so if it is my personal advice is that i am i'm not a huge fan of taking multiple drops so my personal advice is that if you have done two attempts or three attempts then you should take up dnb and you know start your career uh because at the end of the day the degree matters your skill you can always learn with time but the degree matters you should have a degree and uh, dnb and ms are equivalent in terms of you know technical they are both equivalent degrees another thing if you are getting a dnb in a top tier college say you are getting a dnb in a good college in mumbai or in delhi or in chennai versus you are getting ms in say an institute which has opened up a couple of years ago in a remote town of india then i will say that you go for a dnb in a good institute because the chances of you getting good exposure are higher compared to you know you will be just doing the basic amount of surgeries and all in a lower level of ms institute so a good dnb is always better than a bad ms so that's the choice right so i think uh, the things are very clear and i think you know uh, as sir said many uh, aspirants should go personally to that particular institute and talk to the jrs there yeah. to get more of the opinion always 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 uh, that's a very very good option because you have to if you have narrowed down to n number of institutes i will recommend that at least go and visit some or talk to someone uh you can visit at least 3 to 4 institutes or talk to the residents with social media right now it's very easy to do that and uh, make a list of institutes and look if it aligns with your uh, you know your expectations and yeah that is definitely it's necessary right so now sir uh, today only i saw some uh, tweets going on that you know work life balance is itself a myth in you know surgical residency or in general a residency so what is your take on that particular you know disclaimer that someone who might take dnb say okay on in dnb you might get better work life balance but then end up you know not getting the same so what will be your take on this particular work life balance theory uh my take is very simple see i have a belief कि हर इंसान को हर इंसान के लाइफ में एक एक्स अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रगल है एवरी ह्यूमन बीइंग हैज एन एक्स अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रगल इन देयर लाइफ दैट अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रगल डजेंट चेंज वेदर यू आर नो मैटर व्हाट यू डू नो मैटर व्हाट यू मैट बी अ फिफ्थ जनरेशन डॉक्टर डजेंट मैटर दैट स्ट्रगल इट्स फॉर्म विल चेंज बट द अमाउंट ऑफ स्ट्रगल विल नॉट चेंज ओके सो दिस इज अ बिट टेक्निकल वेन आई एम it's a it's a little bit like bit of a, a philosophical or metaphysical thing but the what i mean to say is ki agar aapke life mein struggle hai then you finish off that struggle as early as possible hmm. if you have struggled during residency if you have struggled during 3 years of residency you come out as a doctor who is much more confident mind you this struggle doesn't mean that you work in a toxic work environment where your seniors are scolding or whatever what i mean to say is the amount of workload if you have managed 80 patients 100 patients in a ward for 3 years in ms then you come out as a very confident doctor then you need a small amount of you know training exposure and then you are very confident of setting up your own work you are very confident of dealing with patients if you have not struggled during residency if you have had what they say a work life balance uh, during surgery or maybe any any residency for that matter if you have seen 10 patients a day if you have managed like 10 patients in the ward 
you finish off for three years, you have the equivalent degree of the other guy. But when you are exposed to the patient, the patient is merciless. Okay. When you are exposed to the patient and you don't have the requisite confidence or the requisite skill, then that's a problem. And now your struggle begins. Your struggle will begin after your residency, which is actually very difficult to take. I have seen consultants really struggling to even take skin sutures post-MS because their MS wasn't like there. They have not done enough work in MS. So now the struggle begins. So better to struggle initially than to struggle later. Amount of struggle is not going to change. <laughs> right. So. I think that was a very perfect analogy because uh, you know many students are you know confused overall and it's me or jada confused. So it's better to like sir said ki karna hai struggle to jaldi karke khatam kare to I think that's a better opinion. Yeah. So uh, even now sir like we uh, we are very you know uh, connected with you we see that now you have joined a co corporate hospital setting as all. Well. So now since you have done your residency so now uh, how mm -hmm. do you think that government versus corporate life in general differs with respect to a surgeon and someone who is, you know, uh, planning to work in a corporate or have their own setup in the future. See, government versus corporate is a quite different thing because the number of patients are much lesser when you are in private. Hmm. So you, the time you give per patient rises. Uh, in government setup, I had no option if I have to see an OPD of 200. I was seeing an OPD of 200 when I was assistant professor. Uh, in four, four hours, I cannot give enough time. I cannot plan the management well enough. We have to still, we still manage to do something for the patients, but it was very difficult. Now here I am seeing 10 patients, 15 patients a day over six hours. So it is a little bit more that I can give more time per patient. Number one. Number two, obviously the pay is a slightly better. Number three, your interaction with the patients changes completely. When you are in a government setup, the patient is of the government hospital. The patient is not yours. Unless you take that kind of ownership of the patient, which is quite rare. Okay. Uh, but in a private setup, the patient is yours. The patient will contact you even if they have sardi, khansi, bukhar bhi aata hai. In a post-commando patient, after 10 years, they will contact you only. Because you are their doctor and he is their patient. I mean, he is your patient. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of a personal touch and a personal bonding is more in a private setup compared to a government setup. So it is a both good and a bad for us. It is good because, you know, a positive feedback milta whenever something good happens. But at the same time, it is bad because, you know, we get calls at like 9, 10, 11 p.m. over random stuff. So, <laughs> so it's a, it's a double-edged squad, uh, double-edged squad, to be honest. Right. So uh, now that you are, you know, I think you are you are having overall journey of 10 to 15 years plus uh, the particular journey of being a surgeon. Uh, how would you hmm. rate with respect to one thing which has been the best thing when it comes to your particular uh, surgical life and one thing which you feel this is not good, it should have been changed? One good, one bad. Uh, can, I repeat, can you just repeat the question? Sorry, I was just seeing a report before. Yeah, sure. Sorry. So now you have been in this line for say 10 to 15 years. What is the one thing that you really like about surgery? But one thing that you feel should be changed and you know, something which... Uh, one thing that I really love is that uh, the whole it is the whole work, the entire process is very satisfying. Hmm. Right from the moment the patient walks in, the patient is in pain, the patient is in discomfort, or if it's an emergency, the patient is probably dying. From there, within what you do within a few hours will determine the rest of his life. That whole process, and then you discharge the patient healthy. Then the patient comes back for follow. That whole process, it's so satisfying that uh, it gives a very, very beautiful amount of kick mm -hmm. to me. Okay. Now I'm not doing emergency cases a lot. Uh, mostly like oncology is mostly it is elective. So the patients come to you, they have lost all hope of life because they think that they have a cancer and then they get cured and they come back for follow-up 
it's beautiful to witness but at the same time what i would don't like i don't like a lot about the branch is uh, the amount of expectations from surgeons it's extremely high so we are now like expected to have perfect results every single time there is a very little room for error hmm. now the problem is that you know not everything is in my hand if i do an anastomosis of the intestine i it's not in my hand always that the sutures will stick right. the sutures might give up and the patient might develop a leak and then it is very difficult to explain so now that part is very tough because some most complications it's not in my hand and they still happen <laughs> and the impact of the complications are often disastrous mm. so that thing is very difficult right right i think like like you said you know something surgery is kind of a branch jo jeevan ke sath bhi jeevan ke baad bhi once you even operate a patient post op is more important and maybe you more know important. pre op and all that so uh, patient is your for lifetime right either him or his lifetime <laughs> <laughs> right i think it was a great concise podcast sir with respect to surgery as a branch uh, if if you feel anything particular is missed and you want to add in your closing statement so uh, we have all ears so what i would like to say is that if you want to take up surgery number one make sure that you want to be a surgeon don't be like ki mujhe physician banna tha surgery mil raha hai surgery le liya because then you will be a very miserable guy or if you can join the field and then you have to be passionate about it trust me this is a mind racking and a back breaking job this is not easy you have to even it's not like it's a residency hectic even after residency you have to be on your toes for hours i am just coming out of a 6 hour long surgery right now i'm talking to you i'm just coming out of a 6 hour long surgery which i took after a 4 hour long surgery Hmm. and in between i saw 10 patients and this is an average day so this is the kind of work that you have to do unless you don't enjoy this work now you will not be able to do it right so learn to enjoy surgery and if you do enjoy you will definitely definitely be a very good surgeon right right i think this was a very great uh, statement from you sir that at the end you know one should always feel calm and decide what branch to take rather than uh, ending up in peer pressure or whatever reasons that you know one occur so uh, thank you so much okay. sir for uh, your time and all the handles of sir will be mentioned in the description as well if you guys have any more queries you can surely reach out to him and uh, he'll be happy to help thank you so much sir thank you everyone thank, thank you, you.